It's going down. It's going down. Yeah, yo, because it's the daily, daily, the daily, the daily, the daily, go get up, Miss Joe. You think it ain't when it is? Uh, you think it won't when it is? We are here and we are in motion. We do this thing. Taking off left lane, no coasting. It's a daily go get a business show. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's the daily, daily, the daily, the daily, the daily, the daily go get a mism show. And we are talking about the significance of distance in any relationship. The significance of distance in any relationship. That's what we're talking about on a daily, daily, daily. The significance of distance in a relationship. Have you ever been in a long distance relationship? And when I say long distance relationship, I'm talking about any distance that exists between you two. So we could be talking about distance in, in terms of mileage, square miles, my, 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 my miles, square miles, distance in, in terms of mileage, or distance in terms of thought. Distance in terms of thought. Are you being distant right now? I'm right here with you. But I feel like your mind is somewhere else now. Uh, I'm gonna tell you like this, baby. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your body's here with me, uh, but your mind is on the other side of town. You're messing me around. Yeah, the significance of distance in a relationship. So we're gonna get into this thing because it's throwback Thursday. Let's get real about relationships Thursday. And it's all about us today, the Daily G. Hey, Count Chamber, let me favorita. Count Chamber, let me favorita is all up in the house. I'm down with you for real today. And uh, T. Carrie Wright is always up in here down for the night. I'm glad to see you in my sight. Word up. Good to see y'all. Great to see y'all. That's my word. It's the Daily Go Get a Business Show, y'all. We talking about the significance of distance in a relationship. Have you ever been distant in a relationship? Have you ever been in a long distance relationship? Let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's get it down now. Urban therapy with Sun Sun Seven Five Two. With this your daily, 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 the daily go get a mism show. We do this every single day, every single day, every day, every day it rains, every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. I'm your host, Sun Seven Five Two. AKA Omar with the rrr. And if you can't say Omar with the rrr, well, then you just say Omar with the R. the daily go get a business show all up in your area. And we are feeling it. We are feeling it. It's going to be good. It's going to be live. Listen, tonight, tonight on the daily go get a business show, we are talking about the significance of distance in a relationship. The significance of distance in a relationship. Have you ever been? In a long distance relationship. I mean, like you live here and they live all the way over there. I ain't talking about in the same city. I might not even be talking about in the same state. I'm talking about when you got to jump on planes, trains and automobiles for long rides in order to be with the object of your desire to be with the one that makes your love go higher and higher, higher, higher. Do you understand what I'm talking about? See, the thing about a long distance relationship is that if the two of you are 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 not on the same page in a long distance relationship, it's going to show. If one of you likes the other and the other one is only cool with the other one, then it's going to show. If one of you loves and loves and loves and loves and loves and loves to love me, baby, and the other one is like, well, I like the like that I like it, I like, yeah, it's going to show. And that's not to say that both people have to be exactly exactly in the same realm of feelings for each other but they have to be serious because when you're in a long distance relationship you are not there face to face with each other to be able to patch up any problems or to be able to witness somebody as they go through the trials and tribulations in their lives you're just not physically there now today's devices today's technology makes it a lot easier to be in a long distance relationship than it was in, it was back in the day back in the day when we were talking about the jetsons when we were watching the jetsons and we were talk and we were watching people on tv for a telephone a telephone we were, we were able to see a person that we were talking to on the telephone it was a pipe dream and we remember thinking to ourselves like that that sure would be nice and now it's a reality 
So you can you can call a person, you can video call a person, you can you can text a person. You know, this, we came we came a long way since since um solid state or or Trinitron TVs and uh and, and beepers, pagers and shit. We came a long way. But with all of this technology, guess what? There is still nothing that can match human contact. Human contact, being present, being present. Being right on site where where and when you need to be. They have not created anything that can make that a reality. Because just like y'all see me on a video screen, whether you're on a, a phone, a tablet, or a, or a computer screen, monitor, You still do not have a 360 degree angle of how I look. I can I can turn like this, I can turn like that, but it still doesn't give you or I can turn all the way around. It still won't give you a full view of how I look physically. It just it just doesn't. It's not able to do that because this eye is can only film one way. Video or no video. So for people who only are working with with profile pictures they are at an even greater disadvantage. But I'm only saying that to say this. When you are not right there to see how a person is, see what a person does, see how a person acts, you know, their mood swings, their, uh, their range of emotions from, from day to day, hour to hour within a day. You know, if you're not there when they wake up in the morning and, and there when they go to sleep at night, you may not know you. You may not ever know their fears and their concerns and their and their history. Sometimes you have to be right there, and that is one thing that a long distance relationship puts a, a really big strain on. It puts a big strain on it. S. Cook all up in the house. S. Cook. It's a very good look. Thank you for coming on through. I'm glad that you took the time to come through and watch a brother. Rhyme. We gonna do this for about an hour, and then I'm out skate. I can relate. We can set a date to do this thing, but we can set it straight. Distance, distance in a relationship, a long distance relationship, and we just and we just talking about miles. So if you're on the west coast and somebody's on the east coast, or if you are on the east coast or up north in the Midwest, and, or and you're dating, dating, seeing married or, or in love with somebody down south yeah you can get on the train yeah you can jump on a plane y'all can see each other a couple of times a month and all of that kind of stuff but but you're going to feel you're going to feel the weight and the power of that distance because there is something about you know learning being present and learning how a person is who they are every single day every single day every day every day it rains every day it rains and we haven't done that, have we? Hmm. 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 Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. But seriously, when you are separated by distance, you have to be serious. Or this really, or, 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 if you're not serious in a long distance relationship, then you're not really in a relationship relationship. You are basically in a friendship, you know, because if it's if it's a situation like where it's OK for you, like I see you when I see you. And I mean, I holler back at you. I, right. hey, I see you. Then it, you know, it's not really worth the time because your heart is not into it. And it's going to show, you know, for a man, there's certain things that a man will do to show if he's present in a relationship. And we're going to get into what being distant in a relationship is in a, in a minute. Right now, we're talking about physical distance. Physical distance. You know, mileage. I live up there. You live all the way down there. I got to cross three or four states to get to you. More than 500 miles I have to drive or get on a plane to get to you. And, you know, 500 miles in a car, that's not, no, that's not a small amount of distance. You know, for some people who don't have the type of driving stamina, that is not even a date. That's not a day trip. Some people can do it in a day, 500 miles. 
Now, if you divide 500 miles by 70, 70 miles per hour, and you may have to do 70 miles per hour if you factor in traffic. Now, some people want to say, nah, I ain't doing no 70 miles an hour. I'm going to do 80, 85 the whole way. I'm going you know, to be driving so fast on cur curve roads. I'm going to straighten out the curve. I'm, that's how fast I'm going to be driving through it. It's going to straighten it out. I'm going to move mountains. And your ass be stuck at a stuck at a toll booth, which 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 can seem like hours behind an accident. But anyway, so when you when you when you divide five five hundred miles by seventy miles per hour, how many times does seventy go into five hundred? Well, I said well, seventy. Seven times seven times eight is fifty six. So you're looking at eight hours to to drive five hundred and sixty miles. Okay, so you can say, well, I got so I can do it in seven because seven times seven is forty nine, right? So you're talking about forty nine four hundred and ninety miles, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. sounds good. Like okay, seven hours. All right, so if I go if I go spend the weekend with my with with, with my sweetie. So, so I'll take off Friday and I'll ride up Friday night, Friday morning. I'm when I say Friday night, I'm talking about midnight. I leave at 12 o'clock night and I get there seven in the morning. You know, it's really going to be around 8 30, but I'm going to be there chilling and we're going to be doing the damn thing. And so, so I got all Friday for real. And I'm going to sit back and relax and chill with my baby L. So I leave out on Sunday. I still leave on Sunday morning. Now, no, I look, man. It matter of fact, Sunday afternoon, and I'll be at home soon. So what I'ma do? I'ma leave about three o'clock. I get home by eleven or twelve o'clock. Go to go go to work on Monday. Had a nice little three day weekend. Hey, hey, hey! It sounds good, and it can be done. Don't get me wrong. It can be done. But you know those little weekends they go by fast. So when you're in a distant, when you're in a long distance relationship, you have to decide whether whether the the distance that you share is more like, yo, baby, I miss you so bad. And when and when you're not around, all I do is think of you. I mean, I mean, like all I do is think of you day and night. That's all I do. I can't get you off my mind. Think about you all the time, all the time. Ooh. Ba, 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 da. It's either that or out of sight, out of mind. Well, she ain't here. Got somebody to play with over there. And she lives real close. And she can show me how much she care. And even though the one that lives far away, the one that makes me feel good. Hey. But come on, she's 500 miles away. Come on, what you expect a man to do today? Uh, she probably got somebody over there, too. You know how those young girls nowadays do. Uh, and, and But when we get together, we be like, ooh, it feels good, like warm weather. And when I see her the next time, but I don't want to mess up because she's a dime. And it sounds all good, and it feels all good. And that's what the, that's what the internet has brought to us. And back in the day, we didn't have the internet. So you could get into a long distance relationship by something by going to, to, to events out of town. So we used to have we, we used to have the Greek picnic in Philly. We used to have the Greek picnic in Philly. So pretty beautiful girls from all over the world, from all over the world would come to Philadelphia. You know what I mean? To see, you know, all that stepping in it. We, we, we went to the Greek picnic too. And most of us didn't didn't go to college. They ain't know nothing about no fraternity and all that old bullshit. But we were scooping girls. We were scooping girls because it was all about the cars. Nobody cared about them letters on your chest, arms, jacket, whatever. Nobody care about that shit. My man driving a my man driving an eighty eight Max. Guess what year it is? Eighty eight. So guess who we, who we scooping? All of them. So yeah, these pretty girls from all over the world would come to Philly. And by all over the world, I mean like Jersey and Delaware. 
<laughs> no, they really did come from far. So sometimes down south, up all the way up in Y, wherever, you know what I mean? And next thing you you get you start exchanging numbers and all of that. You might have got with them sometime around the weekend. You know, they came in on a Friday night. You you caught them out there on a Friday night. They went to the Greek picnic on a on a, on a Saturday, spent there, spent all day there, South Street, Saturday night, Sunday. Um, uh, what was that shit? Belmar Beach and all that, you know, back up into the park, all that shit. And you done, you felt like you done found the girl of your dreams, the girl of your dreams. And she live out in the Midwest somewhere. She lived down south somewhere. She live across the bridge in Jersey. She live across the street in Jersey. She live out in Delaware, far out in Delaware too. Bear Delaware, Bear Delaware. So, so next thing you know, you in a long distance relationship. You don't really know this chick, but you know y'all had a hell of a time. You you y'all had a hell of a time, and she's a hell of a dime. You had a hell of a time, and she's a hell of a dime. She's a hell of a dime. You had a hell of a time. You had a hell of a dime. She's a hell of a dime. You had a hell of a time. She's a hell of a dime. Had a hell of a time. She's a hell of a dime. She's a hell of a time. She's a hell of a dime. Had a hell of a time. She's a hell of a dime. Um. And you can't wait to see her. You're longing to see her again. Longing to see her again. Longing to see her again. So y'all trying to hook up and everything. But you're in a long distance relationship with somebody that you barely know. Y'all been running up phone bills all high and shit. We talking about the late 80s. We talking about the mid 80s, late 80s, early 90s. You know, before cell phones really started popping. You was running up bills. Running up bills. Making making home, home telephone bills go up to $1,000. You know what I'm saying? Your mom mad at you. Your little after school job, she making you pay this phone bill. Like, I don't know who the fuck you think you, yo, my bill this month was for 500. My bill this month was for 500. I don't bring home but 400. This is 1987. What the fuck is wrong with you? Get you out by 11. This shit ain't funny. It ain't live. It ain't good. I'm going to have to put you on the punishment. You ain't coming outside for a while and I'm taking away this motherfucking phone. You can't dial. The hell is wrong with this child? She must be crazy as shit. I think she's the devil child. And call her some boy. What the fuck is this? Will you fuck you? Yo, I'm really pissed. Huh? I ain't going for it. What up, Yolanda Nicole? And yo, 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 Yolanda Nicole, how you feeling, ma? And my big sis, Robbie, Robin Ming is all up in the house doing a thing. Good to see you. And Annette Davis, the number one. Annette Davis, the number one. Ned Davis, the number one. Ned Davis, the number one. How you feeling, huh? Good to see me some of you, man. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all coming through. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that like button. Smash it. Push it. Smash it. Push it. Make it. Okay, whatever. T.K. Wright says, I've been in long distance relationships a few times. My first one in New York, Colo New York to Colorado, damn, was hard because we always wanted to be with each other. The distance ended up being too much for us both. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're going to be in a long distance relationship, more than likely you're going to have to have something established. You're going to have to need. You're going to need to have something established beforehand. If you're starting off with that kind of distance, it's like, come on, man. But Carrie, hey yo, Carrie, hey yo, Carrie. This is what I want to know. When you are in a long distance relationship with somebody that you haven't laid down a foundation with, when you when you get into a long distance relationship basically over the phone, how how do you reconcile that when y'all finally get together? Is it everything that you hoped it would be? You know what I'm saying? Because now you all in over the phone, you've been talking all this good shit. I can't wait to see you. It's bigger than sex. It's bigger than anything physical. We're talking about that range of emotions, that depth of emotions that now you have to deliver on all that old sweet shit you've been talking. Even the letters that you done wrote, you know, you know, you're going to put some pen, put pen to pad. You put pen to pad, stuff an envelope, throw a, a, a stamp on that shit, throw it up in that blue ass mailbox. You know what I'm talking about? Be reading like, oh, I can't wait to see you. Oh, oh. But when you get together, it ain't always everything that it, it was cracked up to be. You know what I mean? Because you haven't really gotten to know each other. 
Now, sure, some people believe that they can get to know somebody right over the phone. People honestly believe that shit. I, I've had I've had women tell well, uh, no a woman one uno una. One woman told me that she she feels like she knows me over the phone. No video calls, no nothing. I was like, you know me over the phone. I said, are you sure? Because I sure don't know you over the phone. She said, yeah, I've, I, I know you. I said, okay. You know why she thought she knew me? She used to listen to my shows, not watch them, because I didn't have any shows to watch at the time. She used to listen to my shows. And my Facebook profile. Hmm. She, she saw some of my comedy videos. So she felt like she knew me. And she was dead fucking serious. And I was like, shorty. There's there's, there's much, much more. I, but I said, all right. How about this, though? That long distance relationship never materialized. So we never even got a chance to be around each other. How about that? How about that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to front. Like, a long distance relationship is not a good good idea for me. You know what I'm saying? I could probably do 100 miles. After that, I'm not even entertaining it. I ain't going to bullshit you. Like, nah, come on. Listen, man. Listen, nah, I'm just I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I'm I'm not really with all of that. I'm not really with us. I me. I'm not really down with a situation where I'm gonna have to wait to see you. Like, wait, wait. Like New York is a stretch, is a stretch. Because in and distance wise wise, I'm on a map. They say that. From New York to Philadelphia is 90 miles. But they mean Manhattan. And they mean like the beginning of Manhattan. Like as soon as you get through this Holland Tunnel, 90 miles. And they was calculating it from South Philly. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Actually, that's kind of dumb. Why would they calculate it from South Philly? They should have, they maybe they calculated from the northeast because it's going north. Nonetheless, 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 you know, like when I put on my trip meter and I don't make stops. So from Philly to New York, where I got to go in Jamaica, Queens, it is not 90 miles. It is not 100 miles. It's like more like it's more like a buck and a half. Just keep this. I mean, dead serious. It's like a buck and a half. Because at 90 miles, that means I should be to New York in, in, in two hours. I can't make it to where I have to go to New York in no two hours. No way. I'm wondering if I could do it even. Well, if it was no traffic, maybe. But there's no such thing as no traffic in New York. Even when they took away the, the toll booths. But my point is, my point is, that's not good for me. I don't want to be that far away from somebody I, want, I really want to be with. Not that far. Like an hour drive, I ain't got no problem with that. Two hour drive, I'm thinking about it. Like Harrisburg, <laughs> it ain't gonna work. I mean, you know, I could pretend like it's gonna work, but I'm like, I know, I know me. I'm like, that shit ain't gonna work. Look, let's just be friends. You know what I mean, yeah, I, you can holler at me after you break up with your man. We can start fantasizing again. You know, that kind of shit. Just keeping it on it. Just keeping it on it. Um, but yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Norris Hill, my brother from another mother. Norris Hill. That's up, my brother from another mother. Norris Hill. Uh, how you feeling, my brother? Good to see me some view. Thanks for coming on through. Be down with the Krizu. He says, hey, what up, everybody? I'm driven nonstop. From Chicago to Salt Lake City once. Not for a relationship, though. 
Oh, he's talking about um, um, automobile uh, stamina. Yeah, some people can't stand to drive that long. Some people don't have no driving stamina. It'd be like a four-hour drive. Oh, I can, I gotta get. I got. I can't make it from Philly to to, to Virginia. That's four hours. Ugh. Four hours. Like four hours. Man, I drive. I would. I could drive backwards four hours, and I'm not bullshitting. I could do it. <laughs> I drop backwards four hours. Now, now when you when, six hours, now, now you gotta have some stamina. You gotta have some stand. For real, for real. You gotta have some stamina to drive six hours. But even even with six hours, that's you know. Now you're talking about Virginia Beach from Philly to Virginia Beach. That's six hours. It's really six hours, too. You know what I mean? You, you know. People be like, no, not the way I drive. I can get to Virginia Beach in four hours. No, you can't. Not from Philly, you can't. In a helicopter, you can. <laughs> you know, you got to go all the way out to the water first. You know, you're not going straight down 95. Yeah, you can get you can get to Virginia in three hours. The top of Virginia, you know, right there in like Alexandria. You know what I mean? Fairfax. You know, right by D.C. Yeah, you could definitely do it in three hours. Easy. But you ain't gonna get in Virginia where you need to be. Like Richmond, you got four hours. I mean, you know, you got four hours. Four hours till you get to Richmond. Let me see. Let me see. What's the distance between Philadelphia and Richmond, Virginia? The drive from Philadelphia to Richmond is 248.5 miles. Oh, yeah. 248? Yeah. They say three three hours and 58 minutes. Four hours. Easy. 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 But that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, kid. So... So yeah, you're gonna be a you're gonna be driving for a while, four hours. So Virginia, I mean Richmond is not it's not like Richmond is in the middle of Virginia. It's still sort of northern Virginia, sort of you know not all the way northern, but so to get to that to get to that 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 ocean, you're talking about Norfolk, Portsmouth, Portsmouth. <laughs> Hampton. Now you're gonna be driving for a minute. So anyway, anyway, so that can put a really big strain on a relationship if you're not serious about somebody. Because, like I said, it's gonna show. Because you know how it is, especially you know, you know how women are, they be serious about some long distance relationship. Oh, baby, 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 please. All we gotta do is call each other and be on the phone with each other all day, multiple times. Well, we only on the phone all day. Why, why multiple times? Because uh, <laughs> it'd be like we was here. Like, so you saying if we was if I if I was there, then we would be up up in each other face all time all the time. Yep. Like, what? Well, that might not be exactly how you are when you are with somebody. You might not be the all up in your face type. So the long distance relationship might be working for one of y'all. Because you're not serious. But for the other one, it's like, no, I want to be all up in your face constantly. Constantly. And it's just not that type of party. But if it's not that type of party, you really need not to be in a long distance relationship. Long distance relationships are for serious people. Committed people. Seriously. You know, that's for committed people. Committed. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Hit the hit the hit the hit the hit the hit the like button. Hit the hit the hit the hit the hit the hit the like button. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. All right, all right. Annette Davis says, "Was that like Freak Fest in Virginia Beach?" Yeah, Freak Fest in in Virginia Beach was on. That was Memorial Day. I mean, I'm sorry, Labor Day. Yeah, I remember that. I remember the last late great 
Freak Fest in, in, in Virginia Beach. That was 89. That was 1989, a number, another summer. Get down. Sound of the funky drummer. Yeah, when when they tore up the beach, when that riot against the cops, I remember that shit was crazy. And we missed the whole thing. We was all up in the mix. But his, you want to hear some crazy shit? I had met some chick. I met the chick in Philly at these parties that they used to have at the University of Penn. House music shit. You know what I mean? Met the chick that summer. She was an older chick, too. But she was like, she was an older chick. She was stacked like fuck. Kind of tall. Brown skin. Dark skin, actually. Big, giant, you know. And she drove, she drove a... um. A Mitsubishi Conquest. I was 19. She was like 26, 27. So she was old. She was an old, older woman to me. So 27, 28, some 28, 28, 27, some shit like that. So she's looking at me like I'm a young boy all up on me. I met her at some party at University of Penn or one of them, one of them type clubs we used to go to, them little house music parties. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm not gonna say house parties because house parties was where hip hop music and slow jams were played, and and house parties were fun, and you ain't see no no cornballs, you know, at house parties. You know, house parties was for real niggas and fly chicks. You know what I mean? Who like to get grinded on the wall? You know what I mean? They was they actually happened in a house. House music party was with a bunch of weirdos who dressed funny. And um and and did strange, questionable, you know, s- suspect dances and shit. You know what I'm saying? This is this is when you started blending in um fruity uh, fruit cakes with with straight people and blurring the lines. That's what house music parties were. And I don't care who who disagrees with that. I've seen it. I li- I lived it. Anyway, I met at one of them shits. And guess who I see in Virginia Beach? What a coinky dink! So I'm up in the hotel. You know, I'm trying to see this joint. Like, listen, man, you know, like, yeah, and my little, you know, young, skinny, you know, 19 year old high top fade with the designs all up in my shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, swearing I'm extra crazy fine. Like, I'm going to get this old head. I got to have her. And I mean, got to, got to, got to. So we up in the hotel room while all the rioting is going on. We ain't no shit. By the time we came up out of there, by the way, I ain't getting none. She was holding out like, like, no, no, you gonna wait till we get back home. <laughs> you not getting none, but it had to be like two, three o'clock in the morning. And um, you know, all that grinding, all that kissing and shit. Like, yo, oh hey, you too old not to give up no ass. I guess you wouldn't try to give up no ass, little 19 year old. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, then riot went off. It was shit all over the place. Yo, I was like, oh shit. So we got, you know, we ain't staying out there to riot. We get we went back to our hotel room. The next day, the whole beach was shut down. I saw uh Daylight Soul out there, you know what I'm saying? He was chilling. Anyway, so distance, distance. If you're not serious, if you're not serious in a relationship. If you're not serious about somebody, that distance is going to show and it's going to kill everything. And it's going to cause a lot of resentment, too, because it's like, you know, I really committed myself to you and waited for you and preserved myself for you. You know, it's not like it's not like there are no women here. Then it's not like there are no men there. You know, you don't understand what I'm saying? So it's a it's a the big one of the biggest strains on a long distance relationship is that it make it can make it easily seem like somebody was playing around with somebody else's heart and that may not have been the intention but it's going to come off like that all right so Yolanda, Yolanda Nicole says long distance relationship i cannot do i cannot do it's hard more work trust has to be on 1000 and you know lies kick in lies yeah that's the thing if somebody is a liar in a long distance relationship, you you're not present there to, to 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 find out. 
And it also is going to highlight any insecurities that you have. So if you have trust is issues or if you have any deep seated insecurities, it's going to come out long distance relations. My brother from another mother, Norris Hill, says back in 88, I remember having to kick someone, kick out something like $100 to my mom's for long distance calls, talking to a girlfriend that went to a boarding school almost 90 miles away. They used to kill us with long distance back in the day, y'all. When you think about all of the money that they made through long distance calls, and we did not know that it did not cost the phone company any more money for you to call next door than it did for you to call next state and they was gouging us for in-state money so if your girl lived out in a in a county where the the the, the where the area code might have been um you know different they were still getting you robbie Ming says you have a stalker omar nine huh if they're going to do it, I bet you one thing. If I ever did have a stalker, they ain't going to be able to do it long distance. You don't want to do that. Yolanda Nicole says exactly, Robin. Anybody can tell you anything that sounds good and what you want to hear. Word. And then David says, I had a long distance relationship. And we were in the same state, San Diego to Los Angeles, an hour and a half drive. An hour, hour and a half. Yeah. See, hour and a half drive, that's not that bad. But it is a long distance relationship, but it's not that bad. That's not that bad. I'm pushing it though. Carol Chamber says, I just want to know how many CDs <laughs> we got him. We got him. <laughs> I'm uh shisha 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 Charlene Curry. A chicha 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 to Charlene Curry. What's going on, to Charlene? How you feeling, Sha Charlene? It's good to see me some you, ma. Uh, 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 thanks for coming on through. Uh, all right. Um, and then David says, I can't be in a long distance relationship because I require attention. I understand. I under damn stand. That's Cook talking about some house music all night long. House music all night long. Whack ass song. <laughs> I'll house you. i house you. I'll house you. You in my hut now, son. Fucking whack ass. And that wasn't even a real house song. That was more like a club joint. You know what I mean? Real house music that. Like that one beat, four on the floor all night long. Every damn song. Get the fuck out of here with that cornball shit. I was dissing that shit then. I was like, yo, this music is whack. Whack. But damn, these chicks is fly, though. Um, yeah. Damn. Pretty girls like whack music. Whack. <laughs> we swore we was kicking it. Fuck out of here. <laughs> yo, I was a hip hopper from day one. I ain't played that house shit. You know what I'm saying? Yo, know, my college boys, you know, they was down with that house bullshit. I was like, yo, this shit Cordy. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that was like the death of hip hop. I was like, yo, they don't play no rap music at these records. I mean, at these at these parties, yo. They play house music and they play reggae. Reggae was the new was the new um slow jams. And I don't like reggae. I don't give a fuck who don't who don't who don't like it. I don't like it. I never liked it. Dance, I don't like it. Never liked it. No, I don't know appreciation. And I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> I don't care who got West Indian roots. I don't fucking like it. And I, and I never did. All right, they had a couple of songs, a couple of songs, but I'm not a fan. I did buy a, a couple of Shabba Ranks albums, but that you call that you call that reggae. <laughs> I ain't buy none of that house shit though. I ain't never taped none of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Shirley, show the world's most. Shirley, show the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world. Shirley, show the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world. Annette Davis, you was it? You 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 was in you was in Virginia Beach in '89. 
on, on Labor Day when the riot broke out? You was there? You wasn't the, you wasn't the woman that I was in that hotel with though, because I'd have remembered I I'd have, I'd, I remembered her. And one thing I remember about her that see I was blinded by these big titties because this chick had 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 fake you know the fake contacts and I'd be goddamn yo I mean I was really look I ain't like that shit back then I was really putting some shit to the side like. Look, I gotta look. I'm down here on this weekend. I gotta, I gotta get this joint. This is like I don't, I don't want to be out here ch chasing one of these ch these freaks. But I did meet another joint while I was down there. She was from North Carolina, and I didn't wind up actually seeing her for another year. She came up to Philly, and all that long distance fly shit we was talking and all of that. It all dissipated, and it was like so. I I saw early, like, see, a lot of that shit is about pump faking. You know what I mean? She was she was dope though. She was from North Carolina. She was dope. Can't remember her name. Um, Shirley Shirley says. <laughs> Robbie Robbie Mink says never had a long distance relationship. I hear that. Annette Davis says, I like go-go music from D.C. I like go-go music from D.C. too. That's You know why we like go-go music from D.C.? Because go-go music from D.C. has real singers, real artists, real instruments, real players. That's why we like go-go music from D.C. It has a real beat. You know, it's sort of like African rhythms. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit is dope. It may have never really made it up here, but it was dope. Especially the non-commercial shit. When you go down DC and you see these local, local underground groups, it's like, yo, they smoke. How come they never made it? She was dope. Real dope. Rest in peace, Chuck Brown. Rest in peace to Chuck. He was dope. He was real dope. I feel like busting loose, uh, uh, busting loose. I say shine like, uh, I say what you know now. I say shine like, uh, I say what you know now. Yeah, Chuck Brown, rest in peace, Chuck Brown. Narcel says back then, area code two one six covered all of north northeastern Ohio. I was in Akron, and she was in Willow Willoughby, east side of Cleveland, off of I eighty. You know what? It's so funny how. How Ohio is 216, but Philly is 215. I, I don't understand that. The first time I saw Ohio um, area code, I'm thinking like 216. See, cell phones came and fucked up everything. Get more money. And then David says, did you, did you get a new mic? No, I didn't. But what I do have is a new mic stand, but I'm not going to let you see it. See, it looks all, it looks more professional. You know what I'm saying? You don't see the stand. It's not on the table. No table. See? Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 I was, was, was going to have Thanks for noticing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we stepping our game up. We stepping our game up, fool. Make sure y'all share the show. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. And by the way, you can call into the show. If the feeling hits you, you want to talk about the time that you was in a whole, in a long distance relationship and somebody just took your heart and pulled your heart through your lungs. You know what I'm saying? And left it broken. And left it broken. I invite you to call into the show. You can call into the show, express your passion in any form or fashion. There's no censorship on the show. And the number to call is 319-527-6199. That's the number to call. I said a 319-527-6199. Yes, 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 y'all. I said a 319-527-6199. 
Yeah, get on the line. I said a three one nine five two seven six one nine nine. Yeah, get your shine, baby. Uh, 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 get your shine, baby. Three one nine five two seven six one nine nine, baby. Like I said, no censorship. Press number one and that will let me know that you would like to speak. You know, express your passion in any form of fashion. We would not be mad at you. All you got to do is be a little respectful. Not a whole lot. Just a little respectful. And it'd be all good. If you got to cuss, 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 curse, swear, you could do it down here. Yeah. I said a cuss, curse, swear, and you could do it down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said cuss, curse, swear, you could do it down here. Yeah, yeah, I said, cuss, swear, you can do it down here. Yeah, yeah, I said, I cuss, curse, swear, you can do it down here. You can do it down here, you can do it down here. You can do it down here, you can do it down here. You can do it, I said, I cuss, curse, swear, you can do it down here. You can do it down here. I said, you do it, I cuss, curse, swear, or you can do it down here. We do not promote profanity on this show. No, we don't prof- promote profanity on the show but we do promote expression we do it ex- ex- promote expression so daily go get a business show and we are talking about the significance of distance in a relationship the significance of distance in a relationship okay tk right says i'd rather a long distance relationship than one when you're in the same state but the person isn't mentally or emotionally present well then that would be that would be the significance of distance in a relationship, but that's distance of emotion. That's distance of thought. And we could talk about that now because I guess it's about that time. When you're distant in a relationship, you know, I'm here and you're here, but mentally, I'm not here. Emotionally, I'm not here. In my heart, I'm not here. I may not even be with somebody else, but I'm definitely not here with you. I'm not there. I'm not here and I'm not there, you know? And you're right here where you want to be. It's hard. It's hard when you really want to be with somebody and you can clearly tell that they don't want to be with you. But they're saying that they want to be with you, but they are clearly displaying that they don't want to be. They are clearly displaying that they don't want to be um, where you are. Um, And distance in a relationship is like when you're not sharing with somebody. You're not sharing. You're supposed to be sharing your love. You're supposed to be sharing your life. You're supposed to be sharing your experience. You're supposed to be showing your admiration you're supposed to be showing your your uh desire to be with somebody and yet that's not what you're doing you're doing exactly the opposite of sharing you're doing the opposite of sharing 90 seconds now nah, ain't no 90 seconds we ain't getting no we we started late and we started late and we gonna make up the time we not doing that shit so let me extend this shit a little bit we ain't going to go 90, but we're going to make up the time. We're going to make up the time. Y'all going to get the four hour. It's the least I can do. Plus, we ain't getting to this distance. This distance, the significance of distance when you, that, that, that are not in terms of physical distance. Like, they, you may live with somebody and feel like they're really, really distant. Like, you used to, you used to, you know, share things with me. You used to talk to me. You used to communicate with me. You used to, you used to share. And now, you, for, for whatever reason, you're not sharing anymore. And you don't even seem motivated to share. You don't even seem like you care to share. You don't seem to want to talk about anything significant that's going on with you. And I can tell that something is going on because you seem stressed and you seem you seem quiet, reserved, reticent, shy. And you're not that type of person. You used to be expressive with me. You know, we used to laugh together. We used to love together. We used to talk together. We used to be together. We used to have fun together. And and I try to I still try to have fun with you and it doesn't seem like you're interested in having any fun with me. What's up? I miss you. I love you. I want to be there. 
and here I am right next to you. I'm laying right next to you in bed. Yeah, we have sex, but we don't have love. Yes, we have sex, but we don't have love. <clears throat> Somebody said we don't have colon colon ream tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Oh, I thought I heard something. I might, I might didn't hear nothing. I might didn't hear nothing. I might didn't hear nothing. Okay. Thank you, Robbie Robin Ming. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Carol Taylor says we just use profanity. I feel like profanity uses us. I feel like it uses us. Okay. Okay, okay. And then David says, I know exactly how it feels to be with someone who is definitely showing you that they don't want you. It's hard. It's hard, especially if you're not ready to not be with them. It's hard you know, being ready to be with somebody who's not ready to be with you is hard. It's tough. It's really, really tough. Narsil says, emotionally present. Emotionally present. You know, glad that you're here. Glad that you're here. You know, you can always tell if a person really likes you by the way that they act when you come around. You know, when they see you, when they see you, you know, the enthusiasm, when you talk about getting together, the enthusiasm, like, yeah, I can't wait to see you. It, it has to be more than physical, you know, because listen, a man in particular can be super excited to see you so y'all can fuck, but eventually he, he, you, you, <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I want y'all to uh, um, to pardon my candor when I say this, but the measure of a man is how he acts when his dick goes down. Uh, does he come around when his dick goes down? Will he hug you? Will he smile? Will he frown when his dick goes down? When the 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 dick goes down? Does he come around? Does he? Treat you like a woman or like a clown when his dick goes down, 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 when his dick goes down. I might not like the words, but you know how it sounds. When his dick goes down, does he talk to you? Does he understand what you are talking about, boo? When his dick goes down, does he come around? Does he call you on the phone? Does you hear how he sound? Uh, when his dick goes down, does he treat you like a woman? Does he act like a man? Does he stand on his own two feet when his dick goes down? Do you understand what you're talking about when I say it now? Dick goes down. When his 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 dick goes down. His dick goes down. Does he ever come around when his dick goes down? Can y'all have a little debate? Can you act like getting things straight? Dick goes down. When I say the dick goes down, I'm not talking about fucking around. I see when the dick goes down. Y'all, after y'all finish fucking, when y'all get finished making love, does he act like you're pushing the shovel? Goes down. Dick goes down. Dick goes down. Dick goes down. When his dick goes down. Dick goes down. Dick goes down. When his dick goes down. When his dick goes down. When his dick goes down. They ain't gonna stay up all night. Even if it stay up night, don't mean that he loves you all night. Dick goes down. Even when he taking the blue pill, the Viagra, you know what I'm talking about. Ill dick goes down. He needs supplement. Does he need supplement to keep the love going for his dick? Yeah, dick goes down. Dick going to go down after a while. I don't care how good this shit was. You know what I'm saying? You came three times now. Dick goes down. Act like you know. I ain't saying this shit. I ain't trying to call you no slut, no hoe. I said, 
shit goes down. And I ain't saying that this nigga be slinging all around around like a pit. You know what I'm talking about. Hey, yo, I said dick goes down. A measure of a man, a measure of a man is standing up. You know what I'm talking about. And dick goes down. Don't act like y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. When the dick goes down, whether his dick goes down, stays close to the body, whether it hangs over his ball, you know what I'm talking about, y'all. I said the dick goes down. It doesn't matter the size. I'm talking about them men. I'm talking about them guys. I'm saying dick goes down. Does he still treat you like a queen or somebody like the lobbyist thing he ever seen? I said the dick goes down. Does he still act like he likes a love? Did he easy down? Hi. I mean, y'all can be mad at me all you want. The true measure measure of a man, uh, if he likes you, is the way he acts when his dick goes down. Because when he when his dick is up, I'm not going to say that you can't trust anything that he says, but there's just a different motivation. And you know, and any woman that's that's within the sound sound of my voice knows what I'm talking about. You know how a man acts when his dick is hard. And he don't even, his dick don't even have to physically be hard. You know how he sounds, how he acts when he wants, when he wants some ass. But how does he act when the ass ain't going down? Probably most women have been in some type of relationship where they could tell that the physical part of the relationship is, is what, what a man that they dealt with um value the most but how did he act when his dick goes down when his dick went down <laughs> valerie miss green in the house she said i don't think i like this topic it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right never think it's gonna be all right thank you whoa uh Charlie Curry says, you have a song for everything. I'm going to take that as a compliment, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got a song in my heart. <laughs> I write the songs that make the young girls cream. I write the songs that drink the coal and dream. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. And then David says, I'm very glad that you put it that way. I'm just saying. Ma. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, man. Annette, Annette David says, what happens when the dick can't get up? Ask him for a friend. Well, if his dick can't go get up, then you know how he acts when his dick went down. Now, if his dick can't get up now, it might be on you because you know he can't perform physically. So how do you treat him? It ain't like no women have ever used a man for his dick. You know? It ain't like that. Some, I know women who have bragged about, listen, you know, the nigga wasn't really shit, but if he couldn't do nothing, he could pound. He he could pound. Oh, he pound. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie says when it stopped working, that's the hardest thing to deal with. <laughs> when the dick can't get hard, that's the hardest thing to deal with. It was pun intended. Was it pun intended? Pun. It's a little pun. Was it pun intended? Pun. And then David says, "If you take, if I take you home tonight, will you still be in love, baby? Because I need you tonight. It's, it's the back Thursday. I want you." I need you. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> Baby, you got me wondering if I take you over to my place. Yes, say. Girls in the 80s is always talk about waiting to give it up. 
in the nineties, they stopped talking about uh, um waiting to give it up. They start giving it up in the nineties. Everybody gets sub. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> Valerie Green says pro tongue. That's if it's if it's listen, all women don't listen. Listen, I <laughs> There's some women you can get away with with lick all night, and some women they be like, "Look, yeah, I mean, yo, your tongue is magical, but I need these hips worked. I need somebody to beat me up sexually tonight. I need you to pound me into the ground and stomp me into this bed. I want you to stomp me into these covers. Die, bitch, die, die." <laughs> but what if I bite you? No, nigga, no. <laughs> no tongue will ever be a star over here. That shit is a is a warm up, and it'd be funny too because it'd be like chicks that like I clearly counted four orgasms, five. Five, six. They'll confirm it. Like, yes, I came six times. But none of them equal up to the one I want. When you beat, kick, stomp, karate, chop, nunchuck me into this fucking bed. Or floor. Whatever, however, table, whatever. You are going to whoop my ass tonight. And you're not going to do it orally. You, you are going to sexually assault me consensually tonight. That's what you want to do. You're going to take that baseball bat you have and you're going to beat me down. <laughs> what got you so hyped tonight? I wasn't even hyped. I was chilling. But y'all start planting these ideas in my head. <laughs> DK Price said, stop. Yes. You are going to stop. You're going to kick my ass into. You are going to fucking. No. Yo. You are going to fucking put a kick me sign right here. And you are going to fucking. You are going to fucking kick me as if Charlie Brown actually did kick the football. Because Lucy didn't move it. You're going to kick me like he should have kicked Lucy. That's what you're going to do to me tonight. You want to fuck? You said Bruce Lee? Yeah, you're going to Bruce Lee roundhouse my ass. <laughs> you're going to WWE drop kick me into this bed. Bitch. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Knock it out of the park. Like I said, some women can deal with you know. You ain't even got fuck. You know, it's just, I'm good. Other women be like, "Yes, I realize. Yes, you've been eating me for an hour and a half straight. No commercial breaks. No stops. No nothing. Matter of fact, your tongue ought to ought to hurt. I don't care. I don't care." She'll let you eat her for an hour and a half. You only, you only got, but she didn't really enjoy it till you fucked her for five minutes. Yes, an hour and a half of oral and five minutes of vaginal. Fight back, fight back.
It ain't even been two two minutes. You was underground, underwater for, for an hour and a half. But there was that five minutes, that five minute pounded that made everything worth it. Oh, yeah, I guess it's time for us to get on the body. Huh, I was having so much fun. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. Make sure that y'all share the show. It's a daily go get a business show. We're about to do these birthday shout outs and then we're going to be out. We're about to be out. Robbie Robbie Ming says it. Tongue is foreplay. For some people, that's all play. DK Wright says the best five minutes of her life. Know your role. <laughs> That's good for the house music. There's some holes in this house. There's some holes in this house. There's some holes. Not that Cardi B shit. She still that that was a sample. That shit came out a long time ago. Anyway. Anyway, Ned Davis says it's been a while for me, Omar. With the I wish you, I wish you would stop. I can't take it. It's going to be a ride. Everything is going to be a ride. Think it won't. <laughs> okay. All right. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious. August 13th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and make it the feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S T E C I A L. They are S T E C I A L. They are number one out the box. My man Victor Patterson turning 37 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Vic. And Gucci Peters, happy birthday to you, Gucci. Yeah. And Helen Acevedo turning 26 years old today. And Carlene Davis turning 62 years old today. And she's raising money for No Kid Hungry. And Ethel L. Grimes turned to 49 years old today. And my man, George Anthony Young, um, affectionately known by all his friends as Ant. Happy birthday to you. And Karima Latifa Choice Kilpatrick turned to 41 years old today. And Dora Compian turned to 58 years old today. Hi, hi, Dora. And my girl, go get a Sharita trip. Sharita turned to 48 years old today. And Steve Millen turning 61 years old today and my girl go get her that i've known all the way back since the 1992 kelly clark turning 52 years old today happy birthday to you kelly kells and uh, uh and uh and uh and my man eric ross last but not least my man eric eric ross happy birthday to you i want to say happy birthday to all of you and anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious Glorious, glorious, August 13th, anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally. All of y'all go ahead and turn up, turn up, but don't turn up too loud, just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. A uh, rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on it, do the, do the, do the damn, rock out, rock on it, do the damn thing, you do your thing, y'all represent the queens and kings, you do your thing, y'all represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait, great things happen to those who grind, and any, any, the any, the uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours, and remember, listen, man, I, yo. <laughs> The significance of distance in a relationship is directly significant to the amount of effort, love, and 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 um and desire that you're going to put into a relationship. If you are not into somebody, the distance is not going to matter because if you if you are um, into somebody, then whether they are far away or whether they are right next door, you are going to want to be with them. You know, I want to be with you. You want to be with me. Um, the love is strong. And sometimes, you know how they say uh, absence makes the, the, the heart grow fonder? Well, for some it does, but it only works that way for those who are serious. For the ones who aren't serious, it's not going to make the, the uh, heart grow fonder. If anything else, it's going to make the heart go find somebody they want to be with, for real, for real. It's going to go make the heart gr go find a, go find a mate that they really want to date. Find a date that you really want to mate. 
find a date that you really want to date, a mate that you really want to date, a date that you really want to meet. Uh. So, you know, once again, we need to choose wisely and we need to be sure that we want to be with each other. And it's not all that hard to know whether you want to be with somebody or not. You know, some things we try to overcomplicate, you know, we try to make it look real, real intricate, more intricate than, than it really is. It ain't that deep. You know, stop playing around with them. Stop playing around, son. Stop playing around, God. So it's going down like that. Yo, listen, I want us, uh, I want to thank y'all for coming out. Listen to the Daily Go Get Abism show. Peace to all my day ones, my everydays, and my brand news. I love y'all to death. I resuscitate y'all. I love y'all right back to life. I really want, I really want to thank y'all for all the birthday love yesterday, man. You know what I mean? And I, you know, besides my birthday love, forget about all that. You know, because that's for people who who really that's for people who stop by, ride by, drop by. But y'all come, y'all come and rock out with this show on a daily basis. And we still trying to build and been trying to build for a long time. But y'all, y'all keep me motivated, y'all keep me in the game, and y'all keep me wanting to do this shit every single day. So it, it goes on. So I want y'all to know that whenever I have a, a good day, that means that it's a good day that I'm share, I'm trying to share with y'all because I want y'all to be right there when it when it all goes down. You know, in any type of way, I'm talking about just a good feeling. Success comes in many different forms, and I feel successful every time we have a good time. You know, I go back and listen to these shows. I read some of this shit that y'all write, and I'll be like, yo, this shit is crazy. You know, we got this thing. This is ours. This is our thing. So with that being said, man, we'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern time <clears throat> for another Daily Go Get Amism show. You know, so this is going to conclude what we was doing. This it, 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 is going to complete what we was doing. So let me get it out of here. All right, y'all. So, uh, blog talk. I get back. Ah, I said, I said, I said, ah, yeah, peace, y'all. And like I said, don't Thank forget, you for don't forget to share the you. show, Goodbye. don't forget to subscribe to the channel, don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah, you know, peace. All right.